All right, annoying father-in-law. Dear Bill, I'm a pretty well-rounded guy. All right, let's, all right, right out of the gate. This guy's patting himself on the back. I'm not a complete stiff, but I'm also not a flake. Wait a minute. Dude, those are both bad things. You know? <laughs> I'm not a complete stiff, but I'm also not a flake. Ah, uh, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. Anyways, I have my shit in order. When you work hard to have your life together, the last thing you want is someone telling you stuff you don't need to hear about when you're supposed to be doing... or what you're supposed to be doing with your life and money. My father-in-law is this person in my life. All he cares about is the market. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, IRAs. He actually wrote bongs. Instead of bonds. All he talks about is watching his money grow and how I should be saving everything so I can live rich when I'm older. The thing is, I do save aggressively. I'm doing just fine. Recently, I booked a trip to Greece to surprise my wife for our third wedding anniversary. On our first date, she said she always wanted to go to Greece. I told her she'd get there within five years. That was just under five years ago. Look at you. You're a man of your word. It seems like I came, came through clutch here. Her father, on the other hand, said it was not the right time because of the exchange rate, safety of traveling abroad, and anything else he could throw in there. How do I respond to him? Do I laugh it off and just wait till he talks shit again and again and live with it? Or do I put him, pull him aside and let him know I don't want to hear his shit anymore? Thanks. I would do both. I would experiment with laughing it off at first. And if he keeps coming at you, at some point you just got to take him aside. You know, and just be like, listen, um, I would actually talk to you, uh, to, uh, your wife about it first, just to tell her that you're going to do it just in case he comes at her with his fucking story of like, I was just trying to help her. That he, he just browbeated me. I would just say, you just say to your wife, like, listen, I know your father means well, but, uh, you know, he's always talking to me about my finances, our finances and that type of thing. All right. I know he's very smart with money and that type of thing, but I also feel like I'm smart with money in my own way. All right? And uh, I've saved my money, and we can afford this. And we're young, and you're beautiful, and you want to go to Greece, and I'm taking you because I love you. All right? But i got to be honest with you. If your dad keeps opening his yap, I'm going to fucking shove a dinner roll in it. Are we cool? All right. What are we watching tonight? Real Housewives, or are we going to watch a little sports? Whose night is it? There you go. And then you're out. But at some point, yeah, you got to sit down. If you do have an, uh, an annoying person like that in your life, you really do. you got to sit down with them. And you have to do it. Uh, I do it in a restaurant. Take them out to lunch, you know. So there's no option for any screaming and yelling. And um, just lay it on the line. You just got to say to them, like, listen, you know, I love your daughter more than anything in the world. And you have to know that I'm going to take care of her. All right, and then it'll, and it'll be oh, right, right after that, you catch him off guard because he knows it's a fucking deep conversation. He wasn't ready for it. You're ready, all right, and just say, listen, um, I know you're concerned about her well-being. Of course you are. You're a great dad, all right, but I am saving money, and we are going to be fine. I just do it a little bit different than you. Your daughter has always wanted to go to Greece. And I would rather take her now in the prime of her life than bring her over there when we're both, you know, walking around with dentures and canes, okay? I want her to enjoy this before we have kids and blah, 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 blah. And this is what I'd like to do, and I need you to respect that. And I appreciate your comments about our finances, but I would, but I would, I don't, uh, how do you say this part? I would just say, listen, I will come to you because I know you know what you're doing. But if I, if I am having a problem financially, which I am not, but if I am, you are the first person I will come to with advice. Okay? Until then, I don't want to hear another fucking word. <laughs> How the fuck you do it? Smooth it out. That's basically what you do. All right. So that's the podcast for this week, everybody. Um, I got my first show tomorrow night um, here in Perth. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Um, going to put my hour together out here and looking forward to all the people that I'm going to see, uh, and comics that I'm going to meet and that type of shit. And, um, 
it's going to be insane. It's already going to be insane going through Australia and into New Zealand. But when I go into Southeast Asia, um, experiencing those cultures, it's just going to be unreal. Like in China, I had this great interview um, with the guy for the, the Hong Kong gig. And he was mentioning how Hong Kong, you know, that they're, they're basically their own deal. They have their own constitution and shit. But in mainland China, as he called it, like, do you know, he said recently the, they, they banned puns. They banned puns and wordplay in the media, which I know everybody else is probably going to laugh like, oh, that's silly. You can't make a pun. But, you know, humor is a great way to take the piss out of the fucking people that are in power. Um, and it's a clever way to do it where you can't quite get busted for it. And, um, unless you got a psycho, which maybe they do, but whatever, but it's a way to kind of make your point and stay out of jail and start a movement or whatever. So they ban that type of thing. And I guess the comedians in China are pushing the boundaries of what is allowed on stage. And what is amazing to me over there is that in China, the standups over there, that art form which I think eventually it will go global. It's really weird that that art form has not. The fact that music, you know, acting and, and all these uh, f film, all pictures, painting, all the other arts are worldwide. But stand-up, one of the great arts I feel that there is, is not worldwide. And it's like brand new essentially in China. And what's so fascinating, mainland China, what's so fascinating to me is that they are actually pre-Lenny Bruce over there. You know what I mean? Like I look at these other places where they can actually talk, and I'm like, it's exciting to me because it's like, all right, they're going to have their Richard Pryor, they're going to have their George Carlin, their Sam Kinison or whatever. And, um, you know, these these guys are, are actually in China, are like they're waiting for their Lenny Bruce to come along, which is pretty amazing to me. And... Um, I also can't imagine living in that type of oppression, how that would affect the comedy um, on just like a whole other level. Like just listening to like Richard Pryor and what he ended up talking about because of what he went through. I can't imagine over there. I don't know. It's just like a different thing. Like there's that whole fucking experience living in a fucking country with his like what is that, three, four billion fucking people or something like that? Or a billion people they got over there? I just can't imagine how you would try to stand out over there. And then you got this oppressive fucking thing where people got to stand in front of tanks and shit. I know that was like 25 years ago, but um, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to, I'm hoping that some comics, when I go to Hong Kong, some Chinese comics will come out and I'll get to talk to them and find out about that. Because the guy was actually going, would you actually do a gig on main in mainland China. And I was like, no, <laughs> I wouldn't because I don't know how to fucking, I've been a free man. So I wouldn't know how to rein that in. I mean, I've done corporate gigs and tried to tone it down, but I wouldn't trust myself to not blurt out something that would then end. I'd end up God knows what having to have somebody call a fucking embassy over a shit show. I mean, I don't, I, I couldn't handle that because the guy was going, do you have any advice for those kids over there. And I was like, no, I don't. Cause I, I, I w had a, a, a privileged stand up career where all those walls were already broken down. I actually said, well, I would rather, I would like to talk to them, you know, and hear what they're going through. But, uh, hopefully, you know, things open up over there. Cause I really don't think that any government, if you fucking oppress the people, it, it's just, it's like, this, it can only last for so fucking long before people have had it. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, Jesus Christ. I mean, you need government and you need fucking rules and that type of shit, but you don't got to be taking it to that level, banning puns and fucking wordplay. Give me a break. Anyway, so, 